Hello! Welcome to my September wrap-up video. I'm filming this a week early because at the moment when you are watching this video I will be in Ireland at the Iris Discworld Gun. Yay! I'll see if I can vlog from there but I'm not sure how much I'm, I'll, I will be able to do because I haven't vlogged on a thing like that before so... We'll see. So let's get on to the books I've read this month. First up is Weird Things Customers Say in Bookshop by Jen Campbell. If you're not following Jen Campbell on YouTube yet, uh, you really should because she is amazing. Jen works as a bookseller, so this book contains weird things customers have actually said to her or other booksellers. Now, it's a really, it's a really quick read. Um, I got through the end much quicker than I'd hoped I would, but thankfully there is a second one called More Weird Things But Customers Say in Bookshop, uh, so I will be getting that soon, I think. This book made me giggle and snigger and also weep for humanity. And the illustrations in it really add to the humor of the book. It's really pretty. Okay, next up I read Ravogels by Toon Telligen, which is translated into English as Raptors. This is a poetry collection and uh, it took me a really long time to read because they're all about uh, the main character's father. Uh, every poem starts with the sentence, my father. And all repetition was a bit much for me. There are really good poems though and I found that by the end I finally had a, uh, had a rhythm down about how I was reading this book and that was by mostly reading them out loud to myself because that's the way these poems actually work the best I feel. Next up I read the Dutch translation of The Girl with the Glass Feet by Ali Shaw. I did not like this book. It's magical realism and uh, the blurb described way more action to the girl because in the end it's your basic manic pixie dream girl narrative and I was very disappointed in that because it seemed from the get-go that it would be much more complicated than that and that the girl Ida would get a lot more agency herself because she is one of the point of view characters. The point of view characters like switches every chapter and I thought that was really interesting. Um, but in the end she doesn't get that many chapters and in the beginning of the book everything is about how a group of men are responding to her and then the point of view characters we do get later on in the book are about how she is responding to all of those men. So she keeps thinking about them instead of all the stuff that's going on with her and that just really disappointed me. The one thing that I did, did like about this book was the way one of the characters is an incredible creep but he's portrayed as a creep and the other characters don't let him get away with it. I thought that was well done, but no, I, I gave it a one star rating on Goodreads. Okay, on to books I did like. The Invisible Library by Genevieve Cogman. This is a very nice fantasy romp. It's basically as if the TV show's The Librarians uh, was about collecting books and not just really strange objects and it had alternate universes. It reads quickly and I like the main character Irene and her reflections on the type of person she is in service of the library because she has to collect specific books from specific worlds and hijinks ensue. And the fun thing is that uh, Genevieve Cockman actually wrote some role-playing settings as well I believe. If you're familiar with pen and paper role-playing and Dungeons and Drag Dragons and that sort of stuff you can tell that the writing is a bit similar to the way uh, like a, a campaign would be set up. It was fun. Then I read Day of the Triffids by John Wyndham. Now this is a classic a lot of you will probably be familiar with. It is an excellent book. In it um, our main character Bill is in a hospital because something happened to his eyes and he wakes up and he finds that while he was in the hospital getting better from that everyone else in the world has, had gone blind because of some strange happenings. So suddenly he has to navigate in the world being a sighted person while everyone has suddenly been struck blind. It's dystopian and apocalyptic and then these, there are these plants named Triffids that suddenly have an advantage over all the blind people. It is really well written. I've been underlining some beautiful phrases that I really like and that made me go hot damn. And there are some very interesting observations about the nature of humanity and the way humans would recover from a big catastrophe like this. And I really enjoyed reading this. I also enjoyed arguing with, with a couple of misogynistic characters in the margins, so I've been annotating a lot, basically going, no, stop! <laughs> Which is <laughs> only fun for me. I don't think anyone else has <laughs> will have a lot of joy reading my version of this book now. <laughs> if you haven't read this yet, I would definitely recommend you pick it up because it is a very good book. And lastly this month I read Legend by Marie Lu. Uh, this is a, a pretty well-known YA series. This is the first book. I haven't read the other ones yet. 
and it, it's really well done. I read it in, well, only two sittings. I just couldn't really put it down. And this is basically if you mash up the Hunger Games series with the Divergent series, uh, without the pacing problems that I felt some of the Hunger Games books had, and without the world building problems that I felt the Divergent books sometimes have. But because I've read those series before this, I don't feel like it's adding much. It's threading the same ground. My mind hasn't been blown by this, but it's really well done. And I'm interested to find out uh, how the rest of the series progresses. So there you have it, the books I read in September. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and what you thought about them, because I would very much like to know. Also, subscribe!